This Restart Real Talk is brought to you by NitroSign. It is time to prepare for the future of remote work by being prepared proactively now. And you can start by utilizing NitroSign. At Restart, we utilize it for signing all of our documents in the end-to-end -end digital workflow. So whether you are an individual or you are a business, NitroSign will have the tools to keep your business going from literally anywhere, and it's a beautiful thing. And let me tell you, it is a beautiful thing. But if I'm going to tell you about NitroSign, let me actually show you how I use it. I pretty much use it on my phone from anywhere at all times. I have a document today that needs to be signed. So what I will do is literally just put in the signature. I will put in the date and I can submit it right here. And it's done. It's over with. And I know it's going to get there in a safe and secure manner. There's no cost per signature. And it's an easy efficient, smart, and certainly secure way to sign documents and work your end-to-end -end digital workflow. So now, for the remainder of 2020, NitroSign has free access for those interested. So check out what they're doing because we at Restart are proud to use their tools, resources to keep us going 24-7 from anywhere. All right, welcome to Restart, where we are breaking down the craziness of today and making it relatable to you. Today, we have a special guest joining us. I don't know if I could do his intro justice, but he's an international renowned speaker, New York Times bestselling author. Honestly, the list goes on, so I'm going to stop there. He's also a friend of mine, Ben Nempton. Ben, thank you for joining us. And for anyone, honestly, that's like living under a rock, can you give us uh, an intro as to who you are, what you're doing today, and tell us about yourself? Definitely. Well, it's good to see you. This is, like, this is the new normal man. right here. We're hanging out. I grew up in Victoria, BC in Canada. And when I was in university, three friends and I made a bucket list. And we decided to go on a road trip in an RV to go after our list, but also help other people cross things off their list. And so we started this two week road trip and we thought it was only gonna be a, a two week road trip. And what happened was surprisingly, people wanted to help us cross things off our list. People wanted help with their list. And so this two week road trip ended up lasting years, decade plus. And this bucket list, you know, the things that we thought were impossible, we ultimately ended up crossing them off. So it was, it's been a pretty wild adventure. So I, I would love to talk, we, we talk a little bit about buried life and you, we've referenced it, but for anybody that doesn't know, you talk about taking a swing. I think it is the depiction of really taking a swing and taking a shot. So you use this change in your life as an opportunity to, to get with people that are doing cool things and making a movie. And then here comes the buried life. So tell us a little bit about for people that haven't watched it and just the whole summary of it, A to Z. So at this point, you know, there's there's four of us from this neighborhood in victoria bc which is on an island you know in canada and we're like let's make a movie we all have these things that we want to do but we haven't done them because they're buried and we have moments when we're inspired and we go after them but ultimately they get buried by the day-to-day -day, right they get buried yeah. by school by work by life and and you forget about them and For so sure. we thought shit okay well, let's call this movie the buried life and then we thought, well, then how do we unbury our dreams? And we decided to ask this question, what do you want to do before you die? Uh, because death was the only thing that slapped us in the face hard enough to actually wake up and realize what was truly important. And so when we answered this question, there were many answers. And so that's how the bucket list started to form. It was our answers to what do you want to do before you die? But we just pretended that anything was possible. We pretended that we had, you know, a hundred million bucks in our bank. And that's when we wrote the list. So it was almost, it had to be the most impossible things we would ever want to do but we just knew that this was our moment to go after the big big list items to prove that you know anyone can do anything and that was our goal that we were going to go for it if we failed we failed but it was going to be real i mean the biggest takeaway here is that everyone thinks tv show or thinks network and i think for the most part you think oh you got to be connected you got to know someone this is just four people with good energy and creative ideas that made something come to life, which is just such an incredible story. So now that we understand like the foundation and building it up and MTV picks it up. So you guys have the ability to write it now. You now have a huge network behind you. You've come so far along. How do you actually do the things that you set out to do? Because some of the things you put on the list were extravagant and are reach for almost anybody. So how, how do you actually make that happen? 
Well, we quickly realized that these list items were very hard on their own and even yeah. harder trying to film them without anybody seeing them. <laughs> right? Because as you know, with, with TV, you know, and unscripted television and reality television, a lot of times it's, it, it, it's scripted. And a lot of times what they'll do is they will uh, call ahead to make sure that places are cleared because you can't film and air something unless it's been released. So they don't want to risk um, all these dollars going into a scene um, if you can't actually get it on TV and the owners of the property, the owners of the land won't give you the release. So Perfect. the first thing that we wanted to do, uh, <laughs> it's a bit of a ridiculous list item, but uh, we wanted to break into the Playboy Mansion for a Playboy Mansion party. <laughs> and so the MTV said, okay, well, you know, we're gonna make sure that we clear the mansion um, so we can do this. And we said, whoa, 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 what do you mean clear the mansion? We're breaking yeah. in. If you yeah. tell them we're coming, <laughs> that's not breaking in. That's an invitation to the mansion. Sure. What's sure. the point? And we made it very clear when we did the deal with MTV, we said, you guys cannot pull strings behind the, behind the curtain. This is about four regular guys doing these things. What can we accomplish? Mm -hmm. You can't help us. And they, yeah. and the president of MTV, incredible guy, Tony, San, Tony DeSanto, um, stayed true to his word and he let us run with it and so but everyone was like this is a nightmare and all the executives came down just to watch what would happen there's like bets being placed on whether or not we could do this and uh and ultimately after that point we earned the trust of mtv we were able to make the show our way okay and we really risked it all because if, if if we would have messed up and not been able to to pull that off and ultimately also get permission from Hugh Hefter to air the episode, which took yep. a whole nother uh, three, four months of, 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 a, of a battle basically with his PR firm. Finally, they signed off, you know, but the okay. point is like, we just put it all, all, all on the line to, to try and make it our way. It is, I think what you guys have done is just incredible. I mean, there's so many takeaways, consistency, persistency, uh, ingenuity, that anyone could start anything at any time, right? It doesn't, it takes creative minds and just execution. I think that's, that's one of the most amazing yeah. things. After a few of those bigger list items fell off the list, you know, make a TV show, um, sing the national anthem at an NBA game, you know, and, and play basketball with Obama was the domino that ultimately pushed everything over. Cause that moment was proof that anyone could do anything. And it was proof to us and proof to myself that I could do anything. And it literally changed my core DNA or the, my belief system, because moving forward, I did not think when faced with a challenge, can I do this? I thought, do I want to do this? Cause I know that I can. And I also know it's going to be a, a shit ton of work. So am I willing to put in the work that I know it will, I will need to put in to make this a success? And do I feel like it is aligned with my values and am I doing it for the right reason? Mm -hmm. It's not can I do it because I know it's possible. I have yeah. proof. You know, I can look, it's yeah. like if you climb Everest, moving forward, every other mountain, you're like, okay, I know I can do it. It's going to be hard, but I know right. I can do it. So that's why I think it's so important that we go after these personal goals of ours because really what we're doing is we're training ourselves to believe in ourselves because we're going to prove to ourselves that these things are possible and that we have the ability to do them. And that ultimately will change your entire perspective on your life. And anybody has the, the capacity and the ability to do that. They just need to create that initial momentum. You know, you just need to write down your goals and you need to share them so that other people can help because those two acts, they drive you forward. They create accountability. You know, you have to be persistent. Like the themes consistent with these stories is that relentlessness. And um, you really have to dream, dream big. Because think about it this way. 99% of the world doesn't believe they can do great things. So they shoot for realistic goals, which means the level of competition is highest for realistic goals. So if you shoot for unrealistic goals, there's less competition. And you have a higher chance of getting it done, right? So you, there's this sort of, greater white space when you shoot for those big, big dreams. And it, 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 it's a reason to get up in the morning. It rallies the best uh, people by your side and you, you surprise yourself, you know? So it's, it's, it's all about like going inward, yeah. thinking about what's important in, in your life. What's going to bring you joy? What's going to bring you happiness? And then the reflection of that is your list.
Like forget everything you know about a bucket list. A bucket list is just a list of things that are, is going to bring you happiness and joy and fulfillment. And mm -hmm. it's just blank slate. That's the only rule. In every aspect of your life, write those down because that's going to be your roadmap. When you get buried by the day-to-day, -day, because you will, you need a reminder that your dreams exist. And that's what your list is. It's a reminder that they exist and it draws you back to your course, your original true course, right? That the poem talks about as well. This is, un this is, this is sort of unburying your true course. And so your list is that reminder and, and brings you back to that. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. I think there's so many takeaways from your story. Um, guys out there listening, guys, girls, send us your list. We want to hear it. I'm going to keep learning from you, Ben, and um, we're going to continue to follow your story because uh, it's an amazing one that still has more to come. Thanks, buddy. It's great to All see right. you again. And uh, yeah. take care of yourself. All right, man. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Appreciate your time. Cheers. All right, man. Cheers.